Hello my friends, welcome to another episode of Tantra with Anya and Serafima. Um, in this video I would like to um, introduce a very simple yet very profound concept. The concept of living goddess or the living God. You know, um, if we can worship a God that's made out of uh, wood or, or the iconic God or um, the goddess on the poster, then we can worship God or goddess in flesh. Would you agree? And uh, it's a human nature. We all worship something. Some people worship um, some great artists, some people worship sports, some people worship uh, Jesus Christ on the cross. Um, we all find something greater than us because essentially deep within we understand the greatness of the creation and we find something that's greater than us to worship. And in the process of this worship, we access that greatness in us, actually, sometimes unconsciously. But this is why that whole phenomenon has, you know, has place in people's lives and why it's so important for most of people to find that greatness outside because the world is like a mirror. Most people don't know it, though, but the mirror um, shows you all the great in you and all the foul in you or whatever the, 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 the blockages that we have, right? It's just the mirror. So any greatness that you can see without, you can also see within. But the concept here of the living goddess and, uh, you know, in Tantra, the, um, the idea of goddess is so important because it's the feminine, it's the energy, it's the Kundalini, it's the uh, creative aspect, it's the freedom, it's the surrender, it represents a surrender. And Shiva essentially taught uh, all the sutras to uh, Devi, Parvati, his wife. So uh, Parvati, or the goddess concept, is um, so prominent as a receiver of that knowledge. Right, so we all sort of like stand like Parvati or the goddess receiving that knowledge from the Shiva, and this is what Tantra is it's a surrender um, to the knowledge, to the greatness. So, the concept is that try <laughs> and see how it goes, even for a moment right now to see your spouse or your loved one as the living God or the living goddess. And I know it can be really hard to do because you go like, that bitch, she cannot be goddess, she is blah, 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 blah. Of that, that dumbass, that asshole, no, he God, please. <laughs> He is not God. He's no God. But if you put every of that aside, all that aside, and just for a moment, open yourself to the concept. Because, oh, she's that or he's that is just a concept. It's just a concept in your mind, right? And if you've created that concept, you can also create the opposite concept. It's just the mind. And uh, if you try this, even for a moment, you will see how your relationships will be transformed momentarily, guys and girls. Momentarily. Your relationships with your um, loved ones, with your husband, with your, with your spouse, with your wife. Relationships with your family, your mother-in-law, whoever you really reject a lot. Especially looking at those people. Um, as the divine expression of uh, the creation, especially. And I know it's a stretch to look at those with uh, 
um, complete surrender, uh, worshiping them as a living God or goddess. I know it's a stretch, <laughs> it can be hard, but this is why we're doing this here. So, see if you can look at your wife as a living goddess and worship her as if you go into the temple and actually bow to the divinity, bowing to the divinity in her, bowing in, in the divinity, in the divine and that person. And because everything in, um, in the creation um, is divine, then all of it is divine. She's completely divine, actually. But we can say, I'm bound to the divine in you. Um, and when you say that, oh, this, you know, she has this, 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 and these faults, right? How can she be divine? Just know that the world is your mirror and this person is in service to you to show you something deep inside of you that is on, is can be even unconscious or very subtle. The faults in you that that person is reflecting to show you like a magnifying glass what is wrong with you, what is to fix in you. So that person devotes her life, time, effort to be that image of the mirror, to hold it for you until you fix those, those blockages in your mind. And uh, I highly recommend, by the way, if you want to go deeper in, in the mirror work with your loved ones, which will change your life, guys, I promise you it changed mine, um, then I suggest you sign up for the course, You the Creator, where we go into a mythology, um, very detailed work with the mirrors of the world, including um, especially including your loved ones. And you will see so much stuff about yourself that you didn't even realize. Um, and you will um, fix it. You will rewrite it to the positive. All your negatives will be turned into positives and uh, your life will shift and it's so easy, but there is a method to it and it has to be done. And only you can do it. Nobody can do it for you. A shrink cannot do for you. Nobody can do it for you. It's only you because you the creator, <laughs> you create your reality, not any advisor or life coach, you know, they might have interesting methods, but you, the power lies in you. So coming back to the living goddess and the living God, see if you can shift <laughs> even for five minutes. First by yourself, maybe even looking at the picture of the person, not the actual person, but the picture of the person and see the expression of God in that person. Somebody maybe who hurt you or hurts you now um, and bow to them and put them on the altar and actually worship that person. Maybe bring an offering to whatever that person loves and you know they love that. Um, and then, if you can do it in person, <laughs> that will be even more powerful. Uh, if you put that person in a little, you know, if you can make a little ritual, I've done it. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's mind-blowing experience. It opens up so many dimensions in you and so many dimensions in that person because they get to see themselves as God. So imagine, if you, if someone worships you, how do you feel? You start to feel, you start to connect to the highest in you, right? In the best in you. You start to really connect in that divine in you and you start to experience yourself as God. And if you are a living God, how would you behave? And how would you, you know, cherish and love yourself to the highest, right? And so um, here we come to the next concept seeing the divine in yourself and worshiping yourself and that's a, the final step and uh, I'll tell you that by worshiping others first because we're so used to worship something else if you 
um, will dare and allow yourself or even play just play and do some ritual for your loved ones husband wife girlfriend boyfriend <laughs> whoever is close to you even your child children might work freak out <laughs> you have to <laughs> you know you have to do it in a very subtle way but see the divine in your child oh do you know what it does to a child how much it lifts them up how much it uh, allows them to see the greatness in them, the greatness, the power, the freedom, the creator in them. If you just do it in the most subtle way, <laughs> it will be such a beautiful gift to the child, guys, truly. And I've done it with my children and I can tell you their perspective on themselves and the whole world changes. And they know that everything is possible because if you're God, what is not possible to you, right? So then you can allow yourself to dream really big and uh, achieve things not by fighting for them, not by struggling, not by forcing yourself, but just by knowing that you can have anything by just wanting it and knowing that you can receive it. That's like easy. That's how easy it is. Okay, that's a parenting advice. <laughs> the best one you will ever hear. Um, so see if you can make a little puja. Invent your own. You know what that person wants. The one that I did was, <laughs> I put the poster of Shiva behind, on the bed, behind the bed, and I put my loved one there. He says, could you please sit there? <laughs> and then I sat across from him, looking deep into his eyes, and I said, I bow, in the divine in the divine in you i see the god in you and i worship you as my shiva and then i said something else i don't remember but it was so touching i was crying he was completely shook and then i offered him these things that he likes as a present as a gift so that was very powerful he says well if i'm the god then I guess that makes you into goddess, right? Because only goddess can be with God. So immediately he saw, he, he came back at me with seeing the goddess in me. You see? So it's, it's, it becomes this beautiful um, dance, guys, dance of the <laughs> divine beauties. So that's... Uh, that's the um, the concept number one, but and, and, and it will lead you to seeing the God in yourself, divine in yourself, and then actually making a puja or like a worship ritual for you for yourself, and uh, offering yourself anything that you would offer to a God or a goddess, and that deep grace, the prayer for yourself. Even when you say grace before dinner, uh, you can thank yourself for manifesting all that food and making it so beautiful. You can thank, you can give a grace to yourself for having whatever you have in your life because you have created as God. Because God lives not through you, but as you. We're all extension of that infinite um, energy and consciousness. So. I tell you, you are the living God. You are the living goddess. And um, through this little practice, you can perhaps connect to that concept deeply. And you will see how your life will shift in such an unbelievable ways, in such a tantric ways, <laughs> that you will be amazed at yourself. Everything is possible. And with this, I see the divine in you and thank you for listening. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe um, and visit anyadeva.com for um, all the courses like You the Creator course. Um, there is um, powerful um, methods for accessing your um, soul purpose 
for raising the vibration, for uh, experiencing yourself as a divine being, for entering that vortex of creation where you feel like the creator itself. Um, and many more, and I have um, several books that I have written on uh, chakras and Kundalini, uh, awakening the Kundalini energy. I practice myself Kundalini yoga for about 20 years now. Um, so I do have lots of direct experience with Kundalini and chakras. Then there are courses on channeling, um, telepathy, activating your supernatural abilities, so, um, and meditation, of course. My YouTube channel has lots of tools for self-healing and meditation. I am myself a professional healer. <sighs> and um, that is my life purpose. And I've dedicated 30 years of my life just to that. So check it out. Thank you. Namaste.